The Hemingway caddis is my favorite caddis pattern. Now I want to show you how I tie it. We're just going to use a standard dry fly hook. I'm going to use the Tiemco because I like this particular hook, but you can use whatever's your favorite. And we'll use 6 aught pre-wax tying thread. This thread works real good because it's easy to dub the material on without having to use additional wax. And the first thing we've got to do when we're going to tie this pattern is to select some hackles. And on the Hemingway caddis, I like to use a medium dun colored hackle. And it's important to get really high quality hackle for this fly. You need long, stiff hackle fibers because the reason we use this pattern and the reason it works so well is it imitates a fluttering caddis on the surface of the water. And these hackles will really help you to be able to fish this fly correctly. And we'll take one of the hackles and we're going to tie it in right at the bend of the hook. Now I'm going to make a strip some of the hackle off right at the butt and tie it in right here at the bend because we're going to use this hackle to palmer the body. And then we're going to use a polypropylene dubbing for the body. Now you can use natural fur if you want to, but I like the polypropylene dubbing because the colors are a little more consistent. And when you're applying dubbing on the thread, if you'll use just little small amounts, you won't have any problem getting it to adhere to the thread. We don't need very much dubbing for this particular pattern because we're only going to make the body about two-thirds of the length of the hook. And we'll just wind this dubbing forward. Now this pattern is tied with a dun hackle and an olive body, but you can experiment and use many different color combinations with this fly. It's a takeoff from the Henryville Special, which is an old standard pattern that's tied with grizzly and brown hackle. But since caddis vary a lot in coloration, I've had good success with black, ginger, and olive colors. Now what we want to do is take this hackle that was sticking out the back and palmer this forward and keep the wraps fairly close together. That's why you want to use a good long hackle if you can get one. Because the more turns of hackle you can put on this, the better it's going to float and the better the fly will fish. I have good luck fishing this fly on flat water like the Henry's Fork and also on very fast water. And after we get this hackle palmered forward, then we'll cut it off. And as you can see from this, there's a lot of hackle and that fly is really going to float well. Now for the wing, we're going to use an underwing of wood duck. And then over the top of that, I'm going to take a mallard quill and I'm going to lay that right over the wood duck and clump the wood duck together and just lay it right over the back of the fly like this with a little bit of it extending just past the bend of the hook. And it's kind of hard to get this to lay down on the hook without it rolling. So what you want to do is squeeze it against the hook shank and then turn the thread all the way around it before you tighten. Make a couple of more turns and then that should lay back without rolling around and then we'll clip this off. I find that if you'll clip it at an angle, then it won't bunch up on you when you start trying to tie the head off. Now we're going to take the mallard quill. Now I want to cut a section of this mallard quill out, and I don't think it really matters just how much of a section you take out. What I try to do is get it where it's about half the width of the hook shank. 
I'm going to do that again. That particular piece was kind of ruffled up and you want to get a good clean section for your wing. Now this one looks a lot better. On the mallard quill you'll find that one side of it is smooth and one side is kind of rough. Here, here's the smooth slick side or the shiny side and this side is more dull. And I want the dull side to be showing so I'm going to take this now and fold it. And you'll find this isn't really that hard. Just take your finger and thumb and pinch it like this so that you have an equal amount on each side. And the reason I like to fold this mallard quill is just to give a little more fiber to it. This mallard really is water resistant and I like to get as much of it on there as I can. Now take this folded mallard quill and lay it with your finger and thumb right over the underwing of wood duck and let it extend back a ways because we are going to trim that off when we're finished. Now just pinch it against the hook shank and again make a complete turn around before you tighten. And then tighten a couple more turns. And then it, it won't roll on you. Now you got this butt section to get off of there and again if you'll trim it at an angle you can, you'll find that you can make a little bit neater heads on your fly. There we go and now I want to kind of make some turns of thread over there to make that look a little neater. So now we've got our wing on there and the last thing to do now is put the hackle on. I'm going to take these other two hackles that I have left. This fly requires three hackles. We'll take these last two and tie them in together. And when you trim this hackle, cut this part that's webby out. If you can get good quality hackle, you can discard that and it will give you a much better fly. And then we'll tie these two hackles in right here in front of the wing. And before we're, we wind these hackles, I'm going to put one more material into the fly and that is peacock curl. Peacock curl is a great material for fly tying. I think it really helps attract the fish because of the iridescent color. And it also helps make this fly look a little more insect-like because it builds up the thorax area. So I'm going to cut two sections of this peacock curl out. And I hope you notice that I'm using the eyed stick. And I do that because I prefer the curl off from the eye. It's better quality. You can also get strung peacock curl, but you'll find it, it doesn't look as neat on the fly. Now let's tie the curl in right in front of the hackles. And then wind the thread up to the eye or to where the head's going to be. And then let's wind this hurl to form a little thorax. And this is going to be a base for our hackle, so don't wind it on very thick. It's only on there for just appearance. But it really it, it really makes a lot neater looking fly. And I'm going to wind this hackle one hackle at a time. Sometimes when I'm tying dry flies, I just wind them both together. But I like to do it one at a time so that I can really position the turns of hackle through this peacock curl. We want to get as much hackle as we can on there. So I'm going to make four turns at least with each hackle. If you get enough hackle on this fly, it will skate and flutter on the surface of the water just like a real insect. And you can manipulate it with your, the tip of your fly rod and it really won't pull under. It will just bounce across the surface. Now there's the first hackle in and 
We'll take now and wind this second one right through the first one. See if we can get another four turns of hackle this time. As you can see, once we get all this hackle on there, that fly will really float well. And there's the second one on. We'll clip this out of the way and then tie off the head. we we'll use a whip finisher here on the head of this little fly. And the Hemingway caddis is one that I've been using for a lot of years to fish the emergent part of the caddis hatch. Now there's one last thing we're going to do with this, and that's I want to clip the wing a little bit. As you can see, the wing's extending quite a ways past the underwing, and a caddis really has kind of a tent-shaped wing. And so we can do that, make it look more like a tent shape by holding it folded again, like we put it on, and then take your scissors and just trim it at a 45 degree angle, and that'll give it a little more of a tent shape. I like to use a lot of this mallard quill on the wing because it's really water resistant. And don't put any lacquer or anything to hold all these fibers together. You really want them to kind of fray apart. And it will kind of form a little tent shape as these fibers flare out and it, it'll look even more natural to the trout. And don't be restricted to just this color scheme. Try some different colored variations on your own waters. And I'm sure you'll find the Hemingway caddis to be one of your favorite caddis patterns too.